Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another washer. This one is titled, Are You Scared of the Face in Your Window? Yeah, unless it's mine. Then I'm probably still scared. Why am I seeing my own face? All right. I really enjoy the Are You Scared series. Hopefully you guys are enjoying them as well. If you are, go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy couple, something special. Let's get spooky. <laughs> this video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, most definitely disturbing. When you try to sleep, the shit out do you ever stare at the windows in your bedroom? No. During the day, these windows filled with sunshine can provide a pleasant glimpse to the outside world. At night, however... Man, no. Don't ruin windows in my bedroom, bro. How am I supposed to get that natural light shining in on my pretty, pretty face? Don't scare me in my windows. Man... I won't be scared of the window now. These windows can provide a vacant doorway, waiting to be filled by the horrific possibilities that await in the darkness. You fear that if you close your eyes, even just for a second, when you open them, your once empty window will now be filled with a face staring back at you. For our narrator, that paranoia becomes a reality. Can you just see me outside your window doing this? I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories that may or may not be true. Now, I have not read this story before, and neither has Shane. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end. The Red Man. There was a man who watched me sleep. He had big eyes that seemed to protrude out of his eye sockets. He had rotting red skin, like it was soaked in blood and then caramelized. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait. Already, this already. Is, this is the beginning of the story. I'm just reading what's on the screen, and this one happened to get off to a rollicking start. I don't know what you really want. Really going for it. Just zero to 60. If that's what you want I, for a season I, premiere. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to come back, uh, you know, with the snickle fritz. You want to come back with the good stuff. I first saw him when I was seven. I was having a hard time sleeping that night, but I kept my eyes shut. The wind was cold. I could feel it creeping on my skin. It was laundry day, and mom didn't have a spare blanket. The window made a faint thumping noise whenever the wind blew. Thump. I should have closed it properly. Thump. But it's fine. The broken street light outside made a constant buzzing noise I really liked. I need to sleep. I could faintly hear the television the from the living room. Mom probably fell asleep. Can't stand the buzzing noises of lights. Oh my God, it drives me insane. Sleep on the couch again. I really need to sleep. I was a light sleeper. Anything could wake me up. I guess even the absence of the thumping. The wind wasn't howling against the window anymore. Maybe mom closed the window as I slept. I rubbed my eyes and shifted to my other side when I noticed a shadow on my wall. There he was, smiling. He was the oddest thing I ever set my eyes on. I remember my hands shaking. I waited for him to enter my room and hurt me, but he didn't. He didn't move at all. His eyes didn't blink, not once. I waited for him to speak, but he never made a sound. I remember feeling frightened. I don't remember how I fell asleep again. There was a man who watched me sleep. He had a weird set of teeth. It was as if each tooth belonged in somebody else's mouth. He does sound like he, he does sound like he respects boundaries. How, what? How, how is, how is? I have a thing with mouths. I have a thing with mouths, man. I don't know why. They're disgusting. They are. Don't, don't tell me this motherfucker had teeth. That looked like, cause now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I 
that's no that's no bueno, bro. That's no bueno. Is watching somebody in their sleep in their own room respecting boundaries of any kind. Demons, they hang out in rooms and churches, whatever, bridges, etc. So it sounds like this guy's just chilling and the person was waiting for him to come in and I don't know, you know, whatever they do, nothing. And, uh, and he was just chilling. He was sort of like, yeah. tip of the hat, tip of the hat, my lady. I'm just gonna hang out over here. You go back to sleep. Everything's fine. Don't worry about me. He's got a point. Not blinking, not blinking. Yeah, I mean, they could do nothing or I guess they could always possess that person and condemn their soul to hell forever. But yeah, that's, you know, that's true. two options. His eyes were more bulged the second time yeah, I saw uh -huh. him. Yeah. He almost looked like a different person. I was nine that time. Mom made me stop going to school. She never told me why, but I could sense that I made people feel uneasy. My classmates rarely talked to me, but when they did, they would keep their distance. They didn't want me there. I got used to it, I didn't care. This just seems like a sad aside from what's going on in their bedroom. Do, do the kids at school know <laughs> that the red man is in her bedroom? Or is she just like lamenting like, ah, school also sucked at the time. You know, if you're a parent and you're concerned that your child is maybe not socializing well in school, your go-to plan is to take them out of school. <laughs> you know what helps a kid be better at socializing? Uh, <laughs> locking them in their room locking, with the red man. Locking them in a room. <laughs> Mom hired a teacher who came to our house every weekday. His name was Dr. Fleece. I liked him. He would always look at me in the eye when he listened to my stories. He liked to hear about the red man most. One afternoon after my class with Dr. Fleece, mom called and told me I was going to stay over at my cousin's place. My cousin's name was Ida. She was two years older than me. She was the only person I considered my friend. I quickly packed my things and mom drove me to her house. Ida's bed faced the window just like mine. I'd like, before we get too deep into this little slumber party, I'd like to point out it's weird that Dr. Fleece likes to hear the stories about the Red Man. I'm just going to put that out it there. It is a little weird. weird. Oh, the Red Man again. Oh, I always love hearing about him. Caramelized, you say? Protruding eyes, huh? Tell me more about his people. Teeth from other people's <laughs> mouths. I might be turning the corner here on Dr. Fleece. I got, yeah, yeah I'll say it. Dr. Fleece, I like him. I, I, if this is a true story at the end, the first thing I'm doing is looking up Dr. Fleece and where he practices. It was around 11 when Ida fell asleep. She spent hours talking about her school life, her friends, and the boy she liked. I pretended to understand and made up stories of my own. Mom didn't like it when I told our relatives that I was homeschooled. It was quiet Why? in Ida's neighborhood. It wasn't Why windy not? that night. There was no broken street light, and her mom turned off the television around 9.30. I could only hear the constant ringing when everything is quiet and the faint tick of Ida's wristwatch. My body stiffened. I was falling asleep. I used to really like it when my parents would have the TV on late at night. I always felt like there was something watching me in my bedroom when I was sleeping when I was a child. I had one very specific um, memory. I think I was like... Whenever I was a child, I would just go to bed. I was a very simplistic and easy kid. My, my parents will tell you. I was no troubles. Well, when it came to doing the things that... Going to bed, brushing teeth, eating vegetables. I love my vegetables, bro. Now, the ornery things, like, yeah, oh, yeah, they had their hands full with that shit. I was ornery. I was ornery. I was on seven or eight or something. And I heard a noise in my room and from the foot of my bed, as clear as a bell, I just heard like a laugh, like a, <laughs> you know, like, um, what like the a cartoonish, fuck? like a cartoonish laugh. And, um, I remember being like, Jesus Christ, you know? Um, and I think I got my parents. I woke up. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I heard a laugh in my room. I don't know why, but when I picture six to eight year old Shane, I picture you yeah. walking into your parents' room and saying it just like that. Like, hey guys, um, I'm pretty sure there's a laugh in my room. I don't know what to think of it. <laughs> when yeah. any normal six to eight year old would scream immediately, probably start crying.
I couldn't explain it. I was like, I don't know what's going on there. I assume it was a nightmare. Or maybe from that moment on you were marked and maybe that's why nothing seems to affect you now. I don't know. Eva's arm on my face woke me up. I immediately saw the silhouette by the window. He was here again. His smile was even wider now. I could easily see how dark and dirty his gums were. My chest throbbed. I was unsure if it was fear or excitement. I can't remember how I fell asleep again, but when I opened my eyes, it was morning. The red man was gone. I enthusiastically told Dr. Fleece the same morning. He listened intently. I told him how the red man got thinner and how impossible it is that his eyes were still intact. He asked me if I was afraid. I remember nodding and then doubting my answer. <laughs> I, God damn it, dude. <laughs> Keep it together, man. <laughs> I gotta say, he really lost some weight, but I don't know how his eyes haven't dissolved yet. I'm worried about his diet. I gotta tell you. Gotta eat more kids. <laughs> this guy's gotta get his kid count up and carbs. Right. There was a man who watched me sleep. I know because I watch him back. The red man never blinks or moves. He was just there staring with his mouth wide open in a cheek-splitting grin. Dr. Fleece made a bad decision that day. After our class, he told mom about the red man. Since then, he hasn't come back to teach me. I waited for him. He was my favorite teacher, but he never came back. Maybe I scared him away. I do that to people. One evening, mom decided to sleep in my room. I was reading one of the books Dr. Fleece gave me when she entered. It was the first time I'd seen her that way. She was scared of me too. After dinner, I did my chores and went to bed. Mom was already there. She brought her own blanket and pillow. She was skimming through the books Dr. Fleece left for me. I sat beside her. Since then, Mom has slept in my room. I only knew that I had fallen asleep when I woke up in the middle of the night. The red man was there again, watching me. His eyes were glued to my face, but he wasn't smiling tonight. What the fuck is I wonder this? why. He seemed different again. I was 11 this time, and I didn't feel scared anymore. I was used to him. The red man's company was nice. Since the fear of him faded, I always get to sleep well at night. He made me feel safe. There was a man who watched me sleep. He never moves or blinks. He just stares at me. Two years passed without seeing him, but I could always feel someone was watching over me. Mom still slept beside me, but I didn't mind. The red man watched over her too. It was nice to have company in the darkness. I do like though how uh, red man is becoming sort of a, you know, a father figure now though, you know? Right. I will say that a I'm lot of times it. these I'm entities will make the people that they're targeting feel comfortable so that they could get them when their guard is down. So I, I'm wondering if that's where this is going. When they start out that way though, because it sounded like Red Man came in really hot and was like, I'm going to scare this little kid. And then the little kid was like, hey, man, what's going on? How you been? And Red Man was like, oh, wow, finally someone sees me for, you know, the, Who I am. Cute, the demon, the nice person that I am. and looks past my rotten teeth and my dissolving eyeballs. One night, I woke up feeling thirsty. I looked at the window first, and I felt a sense the of disappointment eyeballs. when I found no friend there. I quietly left my room and walked down the dark hallway. My eyes adjusted quickly and I found my way to the kitchen. I opened the refrigerator and took out the pitcher of water. I poured cold water into the glass. I saw the clock as the light from the fridge faded. It was midnight. A smirk appeared on my face as I walked back to the bedroom. Before I got there, a piercing scream startled me. The glass slipped from my hand and shattered on the floor. I ran back to the room. Panting, I opened the door and saw mom standing behind the bed. She was trembling, her eyes fixed on my window. The red man was there, bloodier than ever. He was smiling this time. The red man, he, he resembled Dr. Fleece. He had the same rotting skin, but he had Dr. Fleece's eyes. I know because of the way he looked at me. Mom kept screaming asking our neighbors to call the police. I tried to keep her calm, assuring her that the red man won't harm us, but she was frantic. She called the police and left me in the room with him. 
didn't expect every man for themselves from the mom. I'm gonna call the police. You stay here with- I was gonna say the same fucking thing. Damn it, Shane. <laughs> what kind of mother's gonna be like, hey, you hold down the fort, okay? Uh, mommy's gotta go make a call. Don't you worry. Mommy will be fine. You creepy little bitch. You've been seeing this motherfucker for years. You're safe. You're good. That's what was going through her head. Nah, this is this little motherfucker's friend. Like, it, it, I know. <laughs> the ref. <laughs> I'm sorry, I murmured, feeling embarrassed by how my mom was reacting. The red man didn't respond, just smiled. After calling the police, my mom dragged me out of the room. I peeked into my room and he was still there. Mom hugged me and brushed my hair with her hand. She told me everything was going to be okay. I didn't understand why she was trying to comfort me. There was no need to. The police arrived minutes later. I watched them examine the red man from behind my bed. Mom was busy talking to them, so I snuck in. A cop with gloves placed his palms by the red man's head. My eyes grew wide. I was about to stop him when mom ran back into the room. She pulled me away and tried to cover my eyes, but it was too late. The police pulled out the red man's head. A head, a head from a makeshift pole outside my window. Turns out my friend was a severed head, four severed heads. They were the ones who watched me while I slept. Are these real heads though? The t says the, 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 the person that was looking through the window was an actual severed heads oh my god that makes sense now because that makes that's why the skin was all gross that's why the teeth were rotting oh my god so dr felice is not the red man he is a victim of the red man yeah well you know i gotta say rip dr fleece look let's just hold out hope for our guy dr fleece and and apologize because we doubted him yeah that was rude that was rude. That was. The policeman said rude. they had had similar reports in the area since 2006. It wasn't only me. One kid who was three years younger than me had been saying the same thing. He had had his own red man, but his mom thought he was only imagining them. He disappeared just two weeks before. She was also a single mother. Mom broke down after that. We moved a week later. There wasn't a man who watched me sleep. It turned out I've been staring back at decapitated heads since I was a child. My friend doesn't exist. I'm 14 now. I barely think of the Red Men. I'm doing fine. New school. I also made a few friends. They started talking. But if you look at it like this, your best friend was severed heads. That's creepy as shit. Cool though. It's really kind of cool. To me because they recognized me from the news. They would always want to hear about the Red Men. It was midnight in our new house when I heard mom turn off the television. I've been having a hard time falling asleep lately. My therapist said that I should try recalling my earliest memory. I've been thinking about it for a few days now and it would always bring me back to when I was five or six. I was in our old house, staring outside the window with my hand pressed on the glass. There were red and blue lights coming from outside. I remember feeling sad. A rattling outside stopped my train of thought. The hairs on my limbs started to rise from anticipation. I stared at the window waiting for... Damn. <laughs> Look, I'm like Ron Burgundy, baby, okay? I'm a, prof I'm a professional. You put meow on the page, the you're gonna get a meow from the Burgmeister. But I, I want a really authentic meow, so please... Here we go, here we go, I'll the try it again. amount of gravitas, but really sell that meow. The hairs please. on my limbs started to rise from anticipation. I stared at the window, waiting for... Meow. Nope. No my... good. Once. Fuck. Nope. One more. It's gotta be. It's gotta be higher pitched. Higher pitch. Higher pitch. I yeah, wanted I to sound like too. a I thought, cat. I'm, I wanna... Look. Just give me a second. I'm in my head. I'm in my head. Okay. Okay. Let me go one more. The hairs on my limbs started to rise from anticipation. I stared at the window, waiting for. Meow. That was it. <laughs> that was yes. good. I felt good about that one. That Check was the gate. Really good. Check the gate. Good gate? All right, let's move yeah. on. <clears throat> I fluffed my pillow and closed my eyes, disappointed. I dreamed of my earliest memory. It was still the same thing. It was my younger self staring at something outside my window with my palm pressed against the glass. But something new happened. When the red and blue lights completely faded, a large, masculine hand 
pressed against mine from the other side of the glass. It lingered there as I smiled. When the hand retracted, I was waving goodbye. A knock. I woke up abruptly when I felt something wet touch my toes. I flinched and sat on the bed. Why does my room smell like rust? When my eyes finally adjusted to the darkness, I saw a child's head on the foot of my bed. My sheets were already soaked dark red. The child was smiling. There were pins and threads poking out of his cheeks to keep it that way. It looked messy, so I started fixing him. There was a man who watched me sleep. He chopped up people's heads and placed them by my window. And now he entered my bedroom and placed a little boy's head on the foot of my bed. I should be scared right now, but I'm not. I've always liked the gifts. A hand knocks on the window. So, are you scared? Fuck yeah. Okay, so now to the point where we find out if this story is real or imagined. I hope it's imagined. And it is imagined. Thank you. The Red Man by Jason Morales is a fictional story submitted to our show. So thank you to Jason. Uh, quite the yarn. A twisted mind on that person. Uh, good on you, Jason. Yeah, it definitely had me at the edge of my seat. Um, not so much that I was scared, but thoroughly entertained by all the funny little twists. Most of the times with these stories, the twist is, oh, this was actually a true story, or this was actually false, and we kind of led you to believe that it was one or the other. The twist in this story was that it was uh, set up as supernatural and ended up being more grounded. So yeah, I would say that I was, I was scared. Now that we know this is imagined, we could maybe ask him to write a follow-up where maybe Dr. Fleece Origins. Um, I love Dr. Fleece. Right. I'll tell you one thing. I don't think Dr. Fleece aspired to be on Aspire. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I guess we'll see you next time. Some impelling humor. <laughs> Rip Dr. Fleece. Good night. R.I.P. Briss. Oh, I love watching. I really love that. Man. Uh, I was hoping that was some bullshit, you know? I don't ever want to wake up with severed heads anywhere, anywhere, anywhere around me. I don't want to see that shit. Oh, I love this so much. If you all enjoyed this story as much as I did, please go down there and hit that thumbs up. While you're down there, go over and slap that subscribe button. Become part of the Bill for Thousand Nation. We do some crazy shit here. If you want to know when that crazy shit happens, ding that bell. It might work for you. It might not. If it does, jump in on one of the premieres. Let me know over in the live chat. Leave a like and dip. That's all you got to do. I wouldn't ask for no more than that. If you really want to support the channel, links in the description. Go check out the store. Got some amazing merch. Can't tell me otherwise unless you check it out for yourself. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. That's a messed up little kid, bro. I enjoyed the gifts.